Right, the other day I showed how I converted my Chinese mini lathe into a belt and pulley drive machine using this expanding mandrel adapter, pulley adapter, which is inserted into the back end of the spindle on the lathe and locked up using a nut on the back here which expands this end and locks it solid in the spindle. And I've been making um, expanding mandrels for many years now. I use them for all different types of things like work holding or for the spindle handle mandrels that go in the back of the lathe. Um, this one's off my MyFed ML7. And um, they're very straightforward to make. Um, but the actual slots here, I've been using a slitting saw, normally a two millimeter thick one. Um, for doing those slots and that's very time consuming. Also the um, slitting saw can only go to a certain depth um, so it's quite limited um, how much um, depth of the slot you actually get. I know you can actually get larger diameter ones um, but it's still quite restricted and I've been opening up the back end here with an end mill on each slot that obviously makes the uh, mandrel expand very easily and you need relatively little um, movement of the actual nut on the back before it locks rock solid. But like I say, it's very time consuming to do these slots. And the other night I was thinking about it, what else could I actually use to actually speed up this process? And while I was thinking about it, I suddenly thought of a tool which I actually bought from my local recycling center some years ago and I tested it out today and it can do very long slots in a matter of seconds dead straight and it's absolutely ideal for this purpose. And it's this tool here, the low cost angle grinder with a cut off stand. You can get these um, relatively cheaply. And I've um, taken off the original uh, small vise that was on there and bolted a proper drill press vise on there. It's only a cheap one, um, but it's uh, great for this purpose. And the actual vise that was on there, it's uh, fitted to the actual base. You can just unbolt it from underneath a couple of Allen bolts. And it was designed for holding metal that way for cutting off. And before I had my carbide insert um, part off blades, I used to use this one for actually cutting um, steel bar um, off to a certain length to go in the lathe um, if I got tired of using a hacksaw. And it's um, very easy to fit another vise on there. There's some two large slots that go down through there. I've used an 8mm Allen bolt with the actual um, uh, nut that they had on the bottom a square one to go in the slot so you can actually just lock it up from the top. Um, I did drill this one out here at the front there was a small hole in there and I've drilled it out for a six um, millimeter and put a um, bolt down through there uh, with a nut again and that's so that I could actually bring the vise forward this way so that I actually don't cut the vise when I'm actually cutting the work. And this is, um, like I say, just a cheap um, drill press vise, but it's very good because of the actual handle here. You can move it um, to tighten it up. And when it gets to this side again, you can actually just move it around again and actually get it um, very tight um, without having a long handle which clashes with the cast iron base here. And I find when using it, it's actually best to hold the actual um, angle grinder to pull the um, uh, disc down into the work rather than this handle here. I've noticed that um, this handle here, because it's offset, if you pull it down, when it touches the work, there's a tendency of it actually going over to one side. Um, I don't know whether that's um, where in this um, actual um, cut off stand um, like I said I got it from a recycling centre 
um, I'll put some new bushes in that sometime and actually tighten that up again but to stop that from happening like I said if you hold the actual angle grinder and pull it down you can get it to go dead straight with no problem at all and I find the best type of disc to use is uh, these very thin cutting discs uh, which are designed for cutting stainless steel they're only one millimeter uh, wide it doesn't matter which make you get I just get the very low cost ones they all do the same job and these seem to work perfectly and I've got a test piece in the vise here which I've centered up um, you can sight down and get it dead center so the test piece is mild steel and I've um, drilled it out so it's um, thin at the front to replicate the actual mandrel and earlier today I did the lower slot um, which I'll show in a minute after I've done the um, top one here I can only do one this evening because I don't want to disturb the neighbours And if you're doing this in an enclosed area like I am this evening, make sure you have a metal tray behind to actually catch these sparks, particularly if you don't um, use the guard on the actual angle grinder. I usually use mine outside. Um, the other day I was using my belt sander and my wire wool was actually hanging down in front of that and I didn't think about it. And within a matter of seconds, the wire wool caught light and I had to work very quickly to actually put the fire out. Plus I've had my um, clothes alight before when using angle grinders so they're quite um, dangerous if you don't think about things. And there we are, a nice straight slot down to the work there and great for making these expanding mandrels. They don't have to be dead accurate um, with an expanding mandrel. In fact, they don't have to be accurate at all. Many people just hacksaw them down. But I do like my work to actually look good um, for use as well. So obviously you have to do each side individually but it's much much quicker than actually using a slitting saw. And just make sure um, use an old vise for this um, just in case you catch the other side. I've caught mine a bit there but I'm not worried about that at all. And these um, stainless steel discs are only 100mm in diameter. Um, yet they still produce a nice length of cut there so they're actually great for this um, that when it's finished will expand very easily and is going to be much better to use than actually using a slitting saw the actual cut depth that I've actually achieved so far is uh, 45 millimeter And you can get all different types of these um, cutting stands on eBay or from Banggood. Um, I don't know how much they vary in quality between each type or what the best one is. Um, but I do intend to make this one much better than it is. Right, just before I go, I'd just like to show you how my Chinese mini lathe is coming along. Earlier in the video you saw this 7 inch pulley, I've had this one for absolutely many years and never used it. And here it is now on the Chinese mini lathe. Um, I find this one produces a speed of 460 on the smallest pulley on the 1400 RPM motor. 
excellent torque and great for drilling or whatever and then I've put a smaller one on this side which goes on the third pulley at the back here and that one produces a speed of 960 so I've just been messing about with um, different pulleys to see the different speeds and the different torque and I find it a very interesting subject before I get my three phase motor and the VFD Plus I've been experimenting with um, various different belts. Uh, I find the ordinary rubber V-belts um, tend to make the lathe vibrate a bit. I can actually see that. And the link belt um, sounds a little bit noisier, but they actually don't vibrate as much as the rubber V-belts. So that's an interesting thing. And I do prefer these link belts now altogether. And like I've said before, the best ones I think you can get are the Fenner ones made in the USA. So this is the 7 inch um, pulley in operation. Then change over So it's all starting to look pretty impressive. Um, this is a brass plate which I've secured to the top of the headstock here. Um, I did have oilers on the top here which I used to oil the um, gears inside. I don't have those gears now so I've used the 1 8 BSP um, threaded holes with these new um, bolts. I made them a bit longer and that's locked this brass um, plate on here um, nice and solid. And on this um, back end here, I'm going to mount the pin assembly for the 24 hole indexer. I've got a 6 inch um, plate come in, a round plate, it's um, about 6mm thick, mild steel off of eBay. And I'm going to mount that one there uh, for the actual pin to go in the um, holes around that one. So that's um, something I'm working on. And as soon as I get the three phase motor and inverter, I hope to try that out in um, various different um, modes. And finally, I've just um, stripped this one down to see what it's like. And all it is is a spindle going through a very um, loose plastic bush. So I don't think there's um, actually any wear in there, it's just been sloppily made. I'm going to knock that one out and probably make a nice uh, brass one with very close tolerance. Also the housings that lock that spindle down are made of plastic so they're not very good. So um, obviously it's been made uh, quite cheaply but having said that it's very good for the price and there's great opportunity to actually upgrade it into a very good machine which I'm going to do and I'll show you how I get on at a later date.